Charles Winson, Stockbridge, Georgia. Yes. Again, we're going to go over the First Amendment <clears throat> because we don't have one right now. Uh, can you speak to the microphone, please? Again, we're going to talk about the First Amendment because right now we don't seem to have one. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Have any of you heard of 501c3s, which all the churches have to be belong to? The government now controls who these black robes in the, in the uh, preaching profession will bow to. One of them is God, and the other one is government. <sighs> or of abridging the freedom of speech. You guys have done a good job of that. We used to be able to address the board. We can't address the board anymore because they don't want to hear what we have to say. And you put us to the back of the bus. Or of the press. Well, do we have a press or do we have a Pravda? Because all we get is propaganda these days. Or of the right to people to assemble. And here's a good one and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Ladies and gentlemen, I got a call from Shavita McKay, or McCammy yesterday, from the DA's office. I followed the procedures that are within the law in order to get before the grand jury with criminal allegations that need to be heard by the grand jury. I followed the book. I followed the law. And I want to tell you right now that your DA, DA's office, that you are over, is not following the law. They could care less about that. Wow. Why is that? Why would they be so brazen as to uh, disallow a citizen from bringing forth allegations of criminal complaint? Well, as it turns out, it's because they don't know what I want to say. They're afraid of what I have to say. Are you afraid of what I have to say? Your DA's office is. Yeah, I'm upset. I'm upset because each and every one of you, when you took office, you had to sign and repeat the oath of office. And in that, o in that oath, you pledged to support the Constitution. Now, whether you know it or not, and I assume most of you don't. Well, maybe you do. <laughs> but uh, most of you don't. That Constitution gives me and the people around me zero rights. Zero. That is a contract for you to keep your hands off of those rights. We don't get those rights, and they are not privileges but you treat them as such, flippantly. None of you here care that there may be criminal things going on within this county. None of you care. Because if you, would, if you did, you'd walk down to that grand jury room with me on Thursday, and you would make sure that I got to put my stuff before them. You would make sure, because that is the proper thing to do. But you won't. You won't. And, you know, we changed out these flags. For that, I, I, I appreciate the effort. I really do. And I, wanted, I, I didn't say this the last time, but I want to say this again. There's only one court in the land where you will find a non-gold fringe flag flying. Do any of you know what that court is? No. It's the Supreme Court. And do you know why the Supreme Court doesn't fly the gold fringe? That is because they deal with the Constitution. Paddleford v. Hayes, Savannah, Georgia, the judge said, you can't bring the Constitution into my courtroom because you, we, were not party to it. It's your contract with us. You're in breach of that contract. And as long as you are in breach of that contract, when I come up here to talk to this board of directors, and that's what you are, a board of directors, I'm talking to empty seats because you do not respond in the constitutional form and manner that you took an oath to, to, 
to adhere to. You're not doing it. I'm sad. I'm sad for the people that died out in Las Vegas yesterday. And I'm sad that this is all happening because people like this board refuse to do their job. Thank you. Thank you.